Welcome everyone to this edition of the uh, FinTech Whiteboard. And this week's episode is about conversions. And so I wanna talk about some things you should know before you do a conversion. So it's stuff you should know before you agree to a conversion. Now, let's talk about another issue that I find uh, is out there quite a bit, and it's this, it's the scope. So we're gonna, we're gonna switch over here, number five, scope. Here, so the last time you converted, let's say that you converted home banking in 2012, and you've been on the system you have for seven plus years, right? And so people have short memories, but what people think is, when they converted in 2012, in their mind, the platform scope is this, meaning that all the features and things that they had to do, they're kind of remembering this, this 2012 timeframe. But in the last seven years, the scope has grown. It's no longer this. It's actually going to be this. And when you don't anticipate this much larger scope, in your conversion efforts because you have forgotten about the seven plus years of effort that has been put into the platform you're on. And let me just give you some ideas of, of what that might mean. So for example, let's say that uh, at some point in your lifespan, you did a merger. And during that merger, you had to uh, merge from a different uh, home banking platform or a different core into your system and there was some custom work done to support that merger. The problem is no one's really thinking about that when they get into this mode of, of understanding the scope. So I find that we all have short memories when it comes to the scope and the scope is much larger than whatever you think it is. I would almost say that whatever you're thinking in your head, I would at least use a 3x multiplier to, to think about what that scope is. It's like I said, it's all the little things. So the next issue that I run into is during the process, uh, when people are, are considering uh, moving over and, and have looked into the platform and have deciding to do something different, is I think that people, as they, as they look through this, um, they're, they're thinking really hard about whether or not they should host it in-house. I find people who, it's funny because I, I find people in the hosting uh, on both sides of the fence. So you got people that say, we're moving because we no longer want to host our platform, whether it be core, whether it be credit cards, whether it be any of these systems, we no longer want to run this in-house. And I'm not going to say that's a, a bad reason to move, but it's interesting because I find that many people do not talk to the vendor that they already have to find out whether or not they could move to a, uh, a hosted platform. And then I find people who are going the other way. We want to bring this in-house. We're tired of not being in control and we want to bring it uh, in-house in our four walls. This is just fascinating to me that we see this a lot. So what to do? How do we deal with this conversion issue? And uh, so if you've been through this whole process, you think, okay, we're doing fine in vendor management. We've got one of these issues here, the bad service, the going out of business. We just, we have to convert. I don't want to. John, I understand. So let me give you some things that might help for your conversion. So first of all, before you convert, make sure that the product that you have and these are important concepts here, that the product that you're getting, you get your, and I'm gonna underline this, your data, okay? And let me explain. Um, as you convert off the old system, you're gonna find that your bill pay payees may or may not be part of your configuration as to your data. The biggest one and the biggest issue is passwords. 
I find that many people, as they convert either off a core or off a digital system or even off credit cards, um, they're going to force their membership to either renew all their passwords. And some people will use that as an opportunity to opt out. They'll just say, oh, I've kind of been wanting to get away from these guys. This is my Sean. I'm just not going to re-up this. Um, they're going to find out that when they, if they, you know, if you don't get your passwords or you don't have a way to access your passwords, that adding third-party systems is very difficult because you don't want to have to uh, make people use a new way of logging in or uh, have to go through, say, their two-factor data. This is another one that we see is two-factor data. So all of a sudden, all these systems uh, that used to know who we were and let us in all the time are asking us, you know, 20 questions before we can get in. Um, so that's something you want to make sure that you're getting and hopefully you had in the old system. Um, and then finally, <clears throat> any of the footprint data uh, that comes with a, a digital platform, be it core, be it uh, credit cards, be it home banking or digital. And what I mean by that is uh, the, the digital DNA that gets left behind when the transaction is done. So in the home banking platform, it could be the browser signature, right? Um, it could be the, the data that you get from uh, the mobile app. It could be in credit cards, uh, the location that it was used. Just make sure that um, you get your data. All right, on to the next issue. You can find me on LinkedIn if you just looked up John Best. Um, if you want to talk to me on Twitter, it's at JB uh, Fintech. Pretty simple. If you want to find me an email, it's JB at Big dash cu.com and if you're an instagram person it's john best official and i would love to hear from you